my name is uh, Rikard Jungberg and I'm the chief test pilot at Saab, Sweden. Uh, my background is uh, the Swedish Air Force and uh, also the military test center as a test pilot. Been with Saab for 11 years uh, right now. I'm just standing here in front of uh, the Gripen D model, the operational aircraft that's uh, operational in Thailand, Sweden, Czech Republic, Hungary, and also in South Africa. Just going to tell you a few things about the aircraft. It's a single engine aircraft, very light, high performance aircraft with eight pylons uh, for storage of weapons and tanks. Uh, in front, we have the Saab radar PS05, a high performance radar for air to air and air to ground. This aircraft is a truly multi-role aircraft, so it can do all the missions in uh, air combat, air to air, or air to ground, or if you fit it with a reconnaissance pod, it can do reconnaissance missions as well. The weight of the aircraft empty is approximately 7 tons, and maximum takeoff weight of 14 tons. It's a uh, Mark II aircraft, uh, up to a ceiling of 52,500 feet. Truly Motorola and a truly a pilot's aircraft. Uh, extremely easy to maneuver, easy to handle. Uh, carefree from a pilot point of view, where the flight control system takes care of all the limits in terms of G, angle of attack, and so on. Uh, the aircraft is fitted with uh, three uh, color uh, multifunctional displays, eight by six inches, uh, where the that gives the pilot an excellent uh, situational awareness. He gets the information from the, the sensors, the radar, the electronic warfare system, but also from data link from, from uh, his friends. Uh, so the pilot gets all the information just in front of him uh, to be able to take good decisions, where to go, when to turn back, and so on to fight the uh, the uh, air combat. Uh, this aircraft now is, as I said, operational, and we're now uh, in a contract with Brazil and with Sweden for the next generation of the Gripen, the Gripen E, and also the Gripen F, the next two seater. The difference between this aircraft and the Gripen E is that we have uh, moved the landing gear. That doesn't sound very strange or very, very odd so, but uh, what it does, moving the landing gear outboard into the wings makes a lot more space for internal fuel. So what you see underneath this aircraft now is a fuel tank. That amount of fuel is set in that external fuel tank. It's what's going to be inside the Gripen E aircraft when we move the landing gear. Uh, what we've also done with the Gripen E is that we have uh, replaced the radar in the front with an uh, electronically scanned array from Celex, giving a field of regard of plus minus 200 degrees, me sorry, 200 degrees, meaning that we can actually look behind ourselves. We also fit the aircraft with new sensors. Just in front of the canopy, there will be an IRST, infrared search and tracker, meaning that the aircraft can now see uh, threats by heat. So for example, aircraft that is hard to see with the radar, for example, stealth aircraft, can now be seen with an IR tracker, uh, search and tracker instead. Uh, in the cockpit, we will then fuse all this information into the displays uh, with a completely new avionics system. And, and all these sensors with the IRST, the radar, the new electronic warfare system will give the pilot excellent situational awareness. Uh, more to this, by moving the landing gear into the wing route, gives space underneath neath the uh, fuselage and that gives space for two more pylons. So the aircraft the Gripen E and Gripen F will then have uh, 10 pylons instead of the D and C version with 8. So more place for storage of weapons and sensors. Uh, 
Uh, we also increase the maximum takeoff weight from uh, for this aircraft 14 ton up to 16 and a half so we can carry a lot more stores uh, more fuel more stores we need to counter that with also with a new engine so we have fitted the Gripen E and F with the General Electric 414 engine so more thrust as well the avionic structure is also new for the Gripen E, as I mentioned. Uh, what we have done with that is that we have divided flight safety critical and mission critical information. And that gives us the possibility to very quick upgrade the avionics, the, the missions uh, for the operational uh, fleet. So if there are new requirements, we can easily put that into the system and, and start testing it without rigorous testing in the simulator. We can go very quickly to flight test and deliver to a customer. And that reduces time, of course, uh, but also cost. Uh, another feature which with Gripen, I would say, is the way it's designed. Uh, there are a few aspects that is very, very important for a fighter aircraft. Uh, it's the design to have it of course, the operational effect, which is excellent in the Gripen, but also affordability, availability, and flexibility. The Gripen is built to be upgraded. It's built for integrating new weapons. That's easy to do. Uh, availability, uh, easy to maintain, easy to operate, not so many crew, and a long time between failures, quick to repair means the aircraft wants to be airborne and affordability as you know the Gripen is to reasonable price to acquire but the overall cost for a long period of time the life cycle cost the cost to operate per hour is extremely low and that means that the pilots can uh, can train a lot you have, you have afford to train the, with this aircraft and the pilots this is not an unmanned aircraft, this is a manned aircraft. And the pilot is the decision maker, so he needs to be able to train. He needs to have a perfect situation awareness. And that's what he will have in the Gripen. Thank you.